All righty. Give me one second, fellas. I failed my driving exam. Did one critical. Yeah, man. When you fail once, you try again. Till you no longer fail. Give me one second. Let me configure my beautiful face here. So it's not too big. I know, I know. Matty, my friend. Good day. Is it good now? Finding Vita is so painful to use. Why? How come? Oh, shit, did I mute the audio here? I didn't mute the audio. Okay. I got this at the conference recently. A couple of days ago, I've been at the... Google Cloud Summit in Stockholm. So th those guys from MongoDB, they gifted me this. Matty, I think technically, Matty, I think technically, um, if you're using Vita, right, you wouldn't need really to, to do much, right? That 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 was the premise uh, of Vita, right? They were like, hey, you know, um, that was the whole point of Vita, was right, zero zero configuration stuff. What it is that you have to configure with Vita, and have you tried ChatGPT? Well, actually, ChatGPT is not going to help you much because. Uh, um, rain, beautiful. Yeah, yeah, exactly, because uh, it doesn't have the latest data and stuff, right? I mean, you, it's not really a knowledge issue, right? I mean, nobody really memorizes a Webpack or Vitas configuration builds, right? It's it's very simple. You don't memorize this crap because you do it once and then you do it again five years later when you do another project, right? So in a way, right, it's... Uh, Ah, I see. Oh, shit. Okay. Wait a minute. Just before I proceed, give me one second. All right. Actually, before we go back uh, and do... Uh, before we do the... Um, yeah, I'm going to get rid of this, actually. And I wanted to just change some things in production. What did I want to do? Oh, yeah. Um, Jesus Christ, man.
G Bowney, Nam Namari, oh my god, good evening everybody. Good evening fellas, good to see you. I wasn't actually sure if I was going to stream today because um, Mondays are usually pretty pretty dead. I guess people go to work and, uh, you know. Good evening, fellas. Happy Monday. It's great you did. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I was, I was thinking, should I just lay down and watch something or just stream and do some work? And I figured, yeah, let's do some work. Happy thousand times of documentation. Let me just do one thing, then we. Let me just try it. Yeah, we're using Bard at work. My my CTO is more confident in Bard, uh, like uh, privacy wise, than than he is in ChatGPT. Man, it's so freaking bad. Spam TV. Good day, buddy. Yeah, I don't like this, but whatever. I don't like it at all, but that's what it is. I don't have the time now to do better, unfortunately. Or was it font bold? Font bold, right? Just wanted to do a small adjustment uh, in something. Maybe that. I, I don't know. Yeah, maybe something like that. I don't know. <clears throat> let's let's try that. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly that's what I'm trying. I'm trying it's it's kinda hard to find a balance between uh, serious enough, but not too serious, right? So I think that's okay. Uh, and I mean, I don't like the yeah. We'll 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 find the time another time to do this. Let's just uh, just wanted to nav bar program network. Yeah, wanted to get rid of that, and then this we're gonna work on that now. So that's beautiful. Um. Oh uh, yeah, remove beta and update. Uh, whatever. Good evening, everybody. Play one game, DT code. Hey guys, how are you? Wasn't uh, I was as I was saying, I wasn't sure if I'm gonna stream today, as uh, yeah, Mondays are usually not so, not many people are here. But let's see, let's see what happens tonight, today. 
I hope everyone is having a good time. Um, let's just go to our awesome uh, Cloudflare pages. Um, and uh, let's see, is it running? It is beautiful. Um, pretty good for nice, nice. Oh, uh, let me just uh, whitelist myself if I may. Um, I don't know why my, uh, I should actually get a static IP. Uh, Uh, to be very frank with you, you know, I would probably be a, a pretty bad network engineer now. I mean, okay, I wouldn't maybe be bad, but you know, I, I worked as a Cisco and Microtech engineer like 15 years ago, right? Uh, and, um, you know, it would take me, I mean, I obviously didn't forget, I didn't forget, right? Uh, like, uh, obviously, network, <laughs> computer networks, uh, of course not. It's just, uh, if you would give me a Cisco device now to configure, right? I would not be able to do it in the way that I used to, right? Because, you know, that uh, that's why, for example, for those of you who don't know, uh, like CCNA and CCNP and CCNE, you have to go and uh, do the exam every four years, right? You have to do every four years because they know that, they know that if you're, you know, if you're not actually uh, doing this, right? Um, if you're not working as, as, as an engineer anymore, then, kind of forget those things because computer networks apart from the theory and practice right you need to just remember a lot of protocols and a lot, a lot of commands when it, when you work with cisco equipment and stuff right so it's kind of um that's 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 kind of the uh no 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 they're, they're not they're not hard right it's just a, it's just a matter of repetition like everything else and that is the beauty of programming it's very hard to forget programming once you learn it but it's very easy to, to forget system level stuff. It's very easy to forget, uh, you know, uh, like a hardware specific stuff, right? Because it's not like, oh, it's just, let me, let me configure OSPF, right? Okay. Oh, I just know how to, well, you don't, right? Uh, so, so, that, so that's the, that's the problem, right? Um, That's the problem, right? Uh, but yeah, I miss I miss working as a Cisco engineer, right? Uh, one thing that I would say that it's better to uh, so so comparing like a programming and and engineering, right? One thing I would that I would say that it's better, right? Yeah, pretty much patch exactly for sure, hundred percent. But th and that's exactly what I'm saying, right? Uh, and uh, yeah, that's that's kind of exactly what I'm saying. Give me one second. Yeah, maybe that's better. Okay, uh, so that's great. Uh, so let me just go to production very quickly. Production. Oh, actually, wait a minute. I think... Did we actually deploy? Doesn't seem like we deployed. Ah, our service worker needs to restart. Okay, cultivating connection with it. Okay. The thing is, uh, uh, certificates are useless, right? Unfortunately, if you don't do the craft, right? Uh, certificate is, is, I mean, they're not useless, don't take me wrong, right? Like, but they are useless if you just complete it and like, okay, I have a certificate, what now, right? Because in, in, in half a year, you will not have that certificate in your head anymore, right? So, so that's why at least uh, the worst case, you know, have some uh, networking, uh, networking hub, some switch or whatever. Like I have all of the equipment here at my home, right? But I think every, every software engineer should have at least basic knowledge of how, you know, how basic things work, how switch works, how router works, how, you don't, you know, you don't need to, to, you know, I, I worked as a, I was, I was specialized in wireless networks, right? Because when I worked in, two, in 2008, I started working at a wireless internet service provider. So I was maintaining, uh, you know, access point connected with, you know, uh, point to point antennas, omni antennas, specific antennas, right? So my specialty was in that, in, in wireless stuff, right? 
So I was not necessarily installing fiber and stuff like that, right? It was more a different type of stuff. So there's various kind of specializations you can have there. Um, uh, yeah, but that's how it is. Uh, it's good that you switch to programming. I, I mean, the only downside of a, the only downside of a of a kind of working as a network administrator is that it's very hard to grow in your career, right? The uh, alley code. Good. Good evening. So it's very difficult. It's way hard. It's way easier. There's a there's a there's a a lot uh, more natural progression as a software engineer than as a network engineer, right? But also being network engineer generally is less stressful because. But, you know, you have days I had even mon months where I did nothing, right? The network is stable, uh, no users complaining, right? So you just sit at the, at the office, read books, play video games, whatever, right? Whatever you do that with that time. Okay, uh, so before we get back to meetups, right? We, we, we might not... Uh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I, I, think, I think knowing how computer networks work there isn't uh, literally a single sub-industry in our industry that where that wouldn't benefit you, right? Uh, it's it's incredibly, incredibly useful, right? No matter, are you working in security or you're working, no matter really where you're working, I think it's it's just generally very, very useful. Okay, so before we, uh, so before we move, um, so before we move on to maybe back, let's see how the stream goes. I think I'm not gonna stream for five hours a day. I might stream for like two, three hours stops until my wife is um, back from work. Uh, so what I'm actually gonna do is I'm just gonna do one thing. I'm gonna do this, blah, 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 and I'm gonna do this. So let's let's try to focus a bit. Uh, I'm very happy to chat with you guys, and we will. But let's try to get some work done because at the end of the day, this is a uh, programming programming stream. And uh, 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 but yeah, but I, I can also show you later on my my home professional home router with Winbox and stuff. Right, uh, I have a Microtik router here at home, and I can show you my cluster, my Raspberry Pis, uh, how how my I have four Raspberry Pis in a cluster, as you can see here. So I can show you a bit how a bit more complicated home setup looks like. And this Winbox basically is a is a is a tool that you use generally to connect to Microtik equipment. So Microtik is like Cisco. Microtik is like Cisco, but cheaper, basically, right? So um, so I'll show you how my home network works and. There's a lot of stuff here that many of you haven't maybe even heard it about, right? But uh, you can see here, here are my Raspberry Pis. I can, you know, SSH into them, um, and I have a little, uh, a little cluster there. Uh, K three S. Oh, this, are, this is wrong. This is uh, this is wrong. To, uh, I don't actually know which 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 one was it. I'll, I can show you later. Yeah. But yeah, this is kind of um, yeah. All right, so so let's let's do a little focus mode just so we get something done today, because you know as as always in this stream we try to make small tiny steps because that's unfortunately <laughs> all the time that we have, so we can just make best out of it. Okay, so what do I want to do today? So as as uh, some of you know, uh, for example, if you wanna report error. So, so what do we want to do uh, generally first thing in this stream? Let's just, just so we can follow what we want to do, right? So uh, as many of you know, right, I have Grafana and Prometheus that I set up uh, manually for, for programming network and uh, I have the logs, I have the API logs, right? But I don't have the front end logs and as naturally this project I'm trying to not purchase anything, I don't want to, for example, natural step would be to use something like Sentry.js or whatever, but I don't want to be using Sentry.js, so we're going to make our little own version of Sentry.js by utilizing this window on air uh, class, which is basically we're going to uh, uh, propagate this error to our API, and then our API is going to send the, the, the front end error to our uh, Prometheus, to our Grafana, right, and then we will be able to now we're not gonna perfectly do it today, probably because we then need to separate the errors, uh, API errors, front end errors, right? But what I want to do basically is, hey, if if uh, on error catches some error, I want to send that to my API. So that's what we're gonna do today. Uh, 
free sentry plan is enough. I just don't want to use, I don't want to use any third party stuff. Uh, you, you, for those of you who've been watching me for months, you know that I'm a minimalist. I don't pre optimize prematurely. I don't prematurely install tools uh, until I need them, right? I mean, uh, so we are, I'm using Sentry at Dream Data where I currently work and it's amazing and it has many features, but if you don't need those features, which I don't need now, what I'm gonna do now is gonna equal Sentry because Sentry.js has uh, video logs that we use at Dream Data. So for example, when an error happens, they kind of visualize that. They literally visualize, you know, through a video, you know, where user clicked, uh, what happened when they clicked it, then uh, exception occurred, right? And it, it, so, so that's what you're paying for when it comes to Sentry. So Sentry has a lot of, it has profiling, it, it gives you dashboards, la la la, right? So, so but I don't need that. I just want to know if, so first step that I want to know is like, are there, are there any errors actually happening in my front end? Because maybe some users are, are experiencing something. So that's the first step. The next step is going to be obviously figuring out the stack traces and, and, and you know, right now we're going to send, you know, the, the, uh, the object in a certain shape. And then if one day we need all of these features, then, well, we're going to then switch to Sentry. But I'm not going to use Sentry just because I need the 3% of its features. That would make no sense. So I'm not going to install a whole library, right? And uh, sign up and introduce uh, external dependency, right? Just because I need errors. I can, I, I mean, I have my, or, my, my own error reporting stack, right? So I don't need the third-party one, right? So, so I'm not, uh, I use Sentry again at work. It's amazing. It's a great tool, but I don't need... Uh, I don't need its its capabilities right now, so I'm not gonna just go and smack uh, smack that in, uh, you know. Yeah, I mean, I've heard actually, if you ignore errors, they just disappear. <laughs> okay, uh, give me one second. So I already did some work uh, in the API, and in API is gonna just have a simple endpoint, right? And we're gonna test that. It's gonna be a simple endpoint, and um, how did I name it? So we're gonna have this log client errors, and um, Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I've heard that it's a very good strategy. Like, if you ignore the errors, they're not they're not really happening. Basically, that's that's what I've heard. I I, I don't actually know. <laughs> yeah. How did I implement this? So I'd have the body, right? Yeah. All right, so great. So this is basically, so our, what is our front end gonna do, right? So just, just some of you can maybe learn something out of it, right? So in, in our React app, right, we have the error boundary, right? The error boundary itself, so so let's uh, let's just, just uh, okay, uh, shut the fuck up, okay. I have to, sometimes you guys tell me to shut the fuck up, now I'm telling you, uh, okay. So, um, yeah, that's how it is. You know how this stream is. It's very honest. Okay, so <clears throat> I said that I don't like inheritance, not that I don't like using class as a synthetical sugar to, to organize things together. That's, there's a huge difference in that. <clears throat> it's not true. I never said I don't like classes. I said I, said I don't like the... the, 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 the the whole OOP pattern that you would write in Java or, or I wouldn't say C sharp, C sharp has ran away. Writing a class like this to organize your code is perfectly fine. But once you inherit from 53 different classes, then that becomes unmaintainable because God only knows what inherits from what, right? So that's what I said. Okay, so what are we trying to do, right? So, so there are two aspects to this on. So, so first of all, what is this on air, right? So, so just so you guys are not blindly like, like zombies staring at this, thinking, what the hell am I even? So so let's first learn something together here. So the browser itself has an event that it listens on, it's called on air. Uh, the air event is fired in a window object when a resource failed to load or couldn't be used, for example, if a script has execution air, right? So we have this global, and I'm almost, up, I'm almost, well, almost and absolutely those two words don't go together. I just wanted to say, 
Uh, I almost want to say I'm almost absolutely sure, but then I realize that makes no sense. So I'm almost certain that Sentry.js literally does this, right? Um, and as you can see on error takes this callback, takes several arguments, message source, whatever, and then the error. Short story, uh, we're gonna use this and we're gonna use this in, uh, in two places. We're gonna use it inside of our um, error boundary in React. And what is this error boundary in React? It's basically just a, um, it's just a basically a parent, a parent component that if, if any of our components fail, um, uh, we're gonna catch that error basically in the error boundary. So error boundary is responsible to catch component errors. So we're gonna, that's why here we say what well, did component catch, we're gonna obviously uh, invoke this error, but then we also have the error reporter itself that we're gonna just initialize somewhere, right? We're gonna log, that's exactly what I'm ice cream, that's what exactly what I'm explaining, yes. So the error boundary itself is responsible to catch those component related errors. And this, this global event is gonna capture like global exceptions, exceptions which happen anywhere, right? Anything that's not in try catch. So basically on error is only gonna, on error is only gonna capture something that's not handled, right? Errors that are handled, I don't want to log those because I explicitly handle them. So I don't care if they happen because I do handle them right now that's a philosophical question or a, like, should you handle them? Should you log those as well? Well, I don't think that uh, um, I don't think I don't think right that there is a concrete uh, correct answer to this. Like, should I log all the stuff? That that really boils down to which problem you're trying to solve. If you're handling, if you're explicitly handling your most of your errors, which I hope you are, then you don't. Of course, you don't want to log them because you're now just uh, just spamming your logs with useless errors. That what are you gonna do? I mean, you're not gonna do right. I store them in my own stack. I have, I store them on my own server. I have, I host everything on Hetzner and I store them there, right? No, handling means that you, for instance, have a try catch around some function. If that function, if whatever in, whatever business logic in, inside of a try is fails, you're gonna handle it, uh, you know, in um, in the catch, right? You're gonna either show the toaster to the user, you're gonna do whatever you want, right? Either way, right? Which uh, which Hetzner machine do you have? I have a, I think uh, I can show you. So I'm paying, uh, I think 20 euros a month for Hetzner. So this is the machine we have, 16 gigs of RAM, four CPUs. It's CX41. Uh, I think they have deprecated this one. I don't think that this one actually exists anymore. Let's actually take a look at that. But I don't uh, think actually that uh, it's not a, it's not a, uh, let's see, uh, prices. Uh, yeah, so, so this is the one we have. This is the one. Well, that's not true, man elf, because yeah, but that's not how you host things on Hetzner. Like, uh, that's that's not true. You should only allow traffic to your Hetzner server through Cloudflare. So when you go when you go to Programmer Network right now, my host machine is only allowing traffic from IP ranges of exactly because that's why you put something in front of it. Uh, I mean, a lot. That's 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 logic, right? Well, pay GCP then. I don't see what the problem is, honestly. Pay for GCP, pay for AWS. I mean, I, I don't understand what is what is it that you like. What is it that you expect? Um, anyway, let's not let us stray. So, so what did I want to say? So, this is what programming network is actually running on, and um, uh, what I want to say. Yeah, this is this is the server basically. Th those are the resources. Uh, Four CPUs, 16 gigs of RAM, disk space, traffic, location, one of those two locations. Yeah, very good price. Yeah, incredible price. All right, so so going back to, let's go back actually to, to, to building this. So, I 
I guess. Shit, but where did I initialize this anywhere? I don't think I initialized this crap anywhere. Yeah, I, I mean, we need to initialize this, right? Yeah, so let's let's go somewhere, right? So we go, uh, do, 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 do. let's go over here and let's say, um, Let me just make sure this actually doesn't break. Ah, oh, shit, this is production. Sorry, that's production. Let's take a look. All right, so it is kind of initialized, right? How can we trigger... Uh, how can we manually trigger uh, this? I guess we can just throw any exception, right? And it should kind of... Uh... Yeah, well, we can't do it here, can we, right? Let's take a look how well, this example they had. They must have an example in here, right? <laughs> Constant eval, evil. Uh, All right, so we can see that it actually works, right? So that's great. So we do actually get an error. We can see that uh, it has in fact been uh, captured. Uh, yep. Yeah, that's actually, that's good. So that's the only thing I wanted to, to get at. Okay, great. Um, and did we actually get a, so let's take a look at our API. So, okay. And then we should, so you can see it actually here in the API as well. So that's what we're doing now, uh, Mr. Elf. Yes. Now we're building a little, almost like a little uh, semi fake Sentry JS. Yes. Yeah. Beautiful. Okay. That's literally, I mean, only thing I can really care about is the stack trace, right? For now. So this is sufficient, right? Okay. Um, thank you everybody for your follows, fellas. Uh, appreciate it. Uh, okay. So let's see what we did. So we initialized this error reporter that I just made gonna get rid of the logs super simple nothing nothing crazy here 
I mean, yeah, only only thing I'm really gonna do just cause I'm uh, cause f I'm I'm a freak. I'm just gonna basically maybe do something like this. Uh, What happened here, man? Jesus Christ. Yeah, it's actually... Ah, I see. Oh, shit. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. But that's also not the place where I wanted to. So this is okay, right? Uh, I think pretty much what I wanted to um, do is this. Because this is technically the thing that can really fail, right? Yeah, I mean, we're not going to be implementing any any types of reply mechanisms or, or or caching of errors. Like we we don't care. This is not we're not uh, we're not building a Sentry JS version version two. We're trying to do better incrementally. So are there some exceptions where this is not going to work? Yes. Does that mean we should not do it at all? Absolutely not. Right. So we can't. Uh... No, I'm not going to do that. No, I don't need that. Right. If the user loses internet connection, then, I mean, that's that's what it is, right? I'm not going to be implementing retry mechanisms or anything like that. No chance, no chance uh, at all. Um, The thing is, for example, uh, uh, right, retry, retry mechanisms usually you implement in things like also like analytics, right? At Dream Data, where I work, I'm kind of an expert in analytics and stuff. And uh, I, I maintain at the company the an, an analytics JS script, just like, a, like you have in Google Analytics or Segment or stuff like that. And in those scenarios, you want to have a queue, right? Where... Uh, it, when you try to track do a page view, a form form track, like uh, like, uh, like analytics ad identify and stuff, if those fail, ideally you want to cache them and then send them along when when the user whatever recovers, right? What we are doing here is a twenty minute thing, and uh, I don't uh, I have no intention to covering every single edge case, right? That's uh, that's not what we're doing here. We don't uh, we don't want to uh, right. If user loses internet, they, their page is not going to load because we don't have offline support now anyway, at least not the proper one. We do have a service worker. We ha do have a progressive web app, but it's not yet there at the, at the, at the, at the place where, um, where you know, you could lose internet and it's it gives you a good experience. Unfortunately, not yet. So... So the only the only problem that I see right now is that we've sent this thing three times, right? So this is a uh, this is a bit awkward, right? And we're basically sending it for. Um... I mean, I guess it's fine, right? Let's let's not overthink it. Let's it's okay. Right, let's see what actually happens. We're gonna try this, and then we'll see. We'll follow the logs and see if it's too much. If we're doing, we're probably doing something wrong, and that's also fine. It's a first version, so if you're doing something wrong, that's that's okay. That's that's perfectly fine. We we can't uh, we can't nail it in the 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 first go, right? And that's okay. So and then obviously this is not going to be great because I'll probably yeah we'll, we'll see, right? I, I don't know, we'll, but we I, we will want to separate client errors from the API errors, right? So let's do that in the next round. So now. Uh, 
So, and actually, Just thinking, uh, our focus time is gone. Okay. Yeah, I'm just just thinking about a few things, right? Um, okay, never mind. But it, it's okay. Let's let's get this out there. Um, Just review it once more, yeah. Yeah, that's okay, sure. Let's, uh, Let's go to let's go to our CI and wait for it to deploy, and then we're gonna see, and then we can go back to doing something else. Uh, any questions in the meanwhile? Anyone has any questions while I'm waiting for this to deploy? Especially new for focus time is here. It's just uh, I'm waiting for stuff to deploy, so. If there's any questions, please ask them now. What what is that? I'm not really tired, uh, you know, but, you know, the thing is, you know, every before every stream, I, I, I put my kid to sleep and then I kind of fall asleep with him and then I wake up, then I'm a bit dizzy, right? Because it takes me like an hour to put him to sleep. You get what I mean? So I'm actually good now. I was actually very tired like an hour ago, but I take a nap with him right before the stream, stream right? So I'm actually very good. I just I'm just kind of chill now, right? I don't know how to explain. It. I actually feel pretty good, but I'm not like I'm like a. You get what I mean? I'm I'm just fine. Like I just like to, just like to have like a chill stream now. And just you know, I don't need another asshole like that guy yesterday, right? You know that guy, that I that got me triggered, right? I look. I mean, that's inherently my state. This is this is what you get for working for 15 years. Uh, this is how your eyes look like. You have no soul. Oh my fucking god, man. Why are you trying? Everybody's trying to sell me some crap, dude. Actually, oh my fucking lord, man. I need to, like, I hate this crap, dude. Like... How do I, how do I unfriend her? Remove connection. Jesus fucking Christ, man. Like, unbelievable, man. Unbelievable, dude. Jesus Christ, man. Like, she she added me like, oh, I liked your profile. Oh. And then she tries to sell me crap a day later. Jesus Christ, man. Don't do that shit, man. 
just be transparent and honest. It's like, hey, dude, I want to sell you some shit. Do you want to buy it? Yes or no? You know, like, oh, Alex, I really like you, like your profile. Can we be contacts? And then you try to sell me crap. Like, seriously. Shut the fuck up, Cedric. Uh, okay, so we're good there. Um, <laughs> fucking troll. I don't know, it's too much, man. Like, like every day, you know, you get those people who try to sell you something, man. Like, and good evening, everybody. Good evening. Um, yeah, every, every day people try to sell you some crap, man. It's just, just too much sometimes. It's just... Uh... All right, what did I want to do? So, no, this is production. No, that's not what I wanted to do. Okay. Uh, all right, so that's good. I wanted to get this one out uh, and that's, I'm happy now. Oh, actually, so so before, so actually, maybe today we're not gonna be doing meetups at all. Maybe we're gonna do meetups tomorrow. So let's. Uh, I wanna fix another thing, right? I mean, you guys know that if if I had enough of money, I wouldn't even consider you guys to be people, right? I would do my best in life to ignore you and to 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 kind of pretend that I don't know you, right? So, right. So let's face it, right? I'm only here because I'm nobody just like you, right? If I was somebody, I wouldn't acknowledge you. Exactly, exactly. R now I have to be kind to you. I have to pretend that I like you, right? That's the hustle you have to go through, right? That's what it is. I actually dislike all of you deeply. But I'm just here because I'm desperate. Uh, I'm actually uh, I, I'm gonna wax my hands and and uh, and and shave them for three three subscribers. So please subscribe, and I'm gonna shave my I'm gonna shave my head right now for five subscribers. Please. Yeah, I mean, imagine I keep insulting you day day in day out, and you keep coming back. What can I do? For three subscribers right now, I'm gonna shave my butthole right on the stream. Okay, that's too much, that's too much. Okay, guys, uh, you're distracting me. Please, um, please stop it. Okay, I think I should, I'm not socially obviously very good, so I'm just gonna focus on code. Uh, I apologize, I apologize, okay. Uh, yeah, so, so there, there's an issue. Okay, guys, I'm gonna stop looking at chat and, and, yeah. By the way, for those of you who don't know why am I joking like this, uh, it's not me, actually. It's not me, forgive me, but listen, just so you guys don't think that I'm an asshole, even though I am, but not now. So there, there was a guy I found on Twitch two days ago, right? I found this just for the context why I said what I did. So this is the screen of one of the streamers from Twitch that I found two days ago. For 400 subs, he's gonna two legs walk, strip and do something. For 500, he's gonna banana costume. This is a typical Twitch streamer. And I just wanted to be cool for a moment and I said, I'm gonna walk, wax my, my feet for three, three subs, obviously trying to be incredibly cheap. Look at this, typical Twitch streamer. Well, you're already subbed Big Shot for like a year, so too late for you, man. Too late, too late, dude. All right, so so uh, let's. Uh, I need to fix one thing now. Next, so one one issue with the team builder right now is that if you change the color, like the primary color, and then you click on the background, this happens, right? Five subs, and you'll fix all the bugs. All the bugs.
All right, so so guys, shut up. Uh, uh, let's go. Uh, so how did I build this component? I called it Team Builder, right? Yep. Yeah, this is the component. Okay, beautiful. So let's fix it. Let's fix it. Let's fix it. Um, so what, what, let's define the problem. So what is the problem right now? So actually, I don't need a notepad. So if I change the color and then click on something else, it propagates that color to that next thing, it seems. Ah, yeah, exactly, right? So if I select the primary color here and click on the background, the value from, from the color picker is carried over to the next property. So, 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 so let me just write that down so I actually understand what it is. So when selecting primary, primary color, and then clicking on a color from primary color selector selector is carried over uh, to the background. Okay, so let's fix that. I've noticed this long ago. I was just too lazy to fix it, to be honest with you guys. Uh, okay, so let's see how I did this. So handle save colors so i assume this happens when you actually click the save button so we don't care about that handle reset colors sure beautiful exactly so this is the problem this is the problem and the problem is obviously that we have a singular uh, singular uh, color uh, uh, so we we have a single variable that selects th this color so as soon as you switch to this it's using the one because, right? Cedric, I love you, man. Sleep well and uh, be well. And uh, thank you for coming as always. Okay, so so pretty much this is what we have to, to, to improve, right? Um, so this is what we have to. So instead of having this color here as such, We we would need something like this, right? So each one of them actually has its own color, right? Poster check, uh yeah. I'm good. I, I am, I am, I promise I'm sitting, I'm sitting uh, I'm properly. Oh my God. Shut the fuck up, Leo. Okay. <laughs> okay, uh, shit. Uh, so we would need to kind of know the, co so okay, to, to, to kind of fix this properly, right? But we would need to know kind of the context and what you're clicking on. So once you actually click on one of those fellas, we should set that in state, right? So wh where are, how did I build this back in the day? I should probably actually op turn this into a library. I think the way that I did this was actually super awesome. But either way, uh, buttons, ah, okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. On click is selecting type button type. Okay, and wait a minute, what, what does this thing have? Buttons type background, okay. So that's actually correct, right? Um, What did I do here? Wait.
yeah, so that that's that's the problem, right? Oof, okay. So I think we, we must we simply must have uh yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. Yeah, so, so basically this set color, so this thing has to be actually an object, right? It's gonna have um, primary background and text, exactly, right? But I think to make it clever, it would be better if it matches those types. So primary, exactly, beautiful, that's good, that's smart. Background and text, yeah, that's actually very good. So now, now in this side of this bad boy here, we can say, um, and let's actually rename this to colors and set colors. Happy Monday, Leo, man, have a good one, dude. Shit, we already we already have this crap. Uh, wait, selector colors. Well, we actually do need that, right? So what, what would be the, so and the color here. The color here would be selector colors. So that would be, I guess, the initial state, right? So now, yeah, okay. Banana costume, exactly. And then basically over here somewhere, I suppose we're gonna do this. We're gonna say selector colors. And we're gonna basically say, yeah, is selecting type, is selecting color. That's great, right? But then, and then we basically have to use that, right? Color is no. X color, yeah, okay, <laughs> okay, so this is the input, okay, my bad, my bad. On change set is selecting. Okay, so that's good, I think. Ah, shit. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, we we were debouncing that crap. Yeah. Okay, never mind. Fall back. Fall back. It's okay. Uh, fall back for a second. Uh, yeah. So we will actually. Yeah, exactly. Shit. It's a bit annoying, but we'll figure it out. Uh, so, and I, where, where do I have a use effect where we, where I actually react to changing stuff? <laughs> oh yeah. Over here. Right. Yeah. Okay. It's selecting color. Yeah. So this is, this is kind of the problem, right? It's selecting type.
I mean, this technically should maybe be working already. Give me a second. Hmm. Shit. Yeah. Where's my notepad? What did I write? Yeah. So we need we need to have three different variables. I, I don't see a way of doing it with, with a single one, but let me just for a second more read it. So this is fine. That's okay. That's okay. Uh, yeah, so this is, I guess, not it's selecting CSS variable. Selecting color. Agreed, agreed. So I guess actually, I guess actually the way that we could fix this, right, is one side, where is the click? Wait a minute, maybe, maybe this is simpler than I thought and click outside, wait, uh, wait, 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 Guten Abend. Yeah, over here, right, so it's selecting, yeah, maybe here we can actually solve it, right? Yeah, right. There we go, right? Yeah, exactly. Beautiful. Yep. That's exactly what I wanted. Beautiful. So wait, so I do this, right? Yeah, there we go. Great. Amazing. That was it. So I just... Shit, but is it? Wait, so I do this. Well, almost, almost, not not really a genius yet, wait. Yeah, not quite, okay, so, but... Um, but almost, almost, almost. So on click, we're gonna set this to be selecting, right? And that's great, right? So so actually, I think I, I should just do this, right? Wait, so I do, let's say this, and then I do this. Shit, man. So wait, what's happening now? Let me think, so set is selecting, type button, type, CSS variable button, CSS variable, Yeah, so that's that's kind of okay, right? So this color is then reset, but I think we need to reset something else as well. No, set colors. Okay, one second. I think we're almost there. I think I figured it out. So that's there. Uh, set colors, okay. Mm-hmm. Shit. Almost, almost, almost. 
Yeah, no, no, no. Mm -mm. All right, let's just slightly debug here. I think we're almost there, but something's off, uh, obviously, right? Um, so let's uh, let's just uh, let's just print this fella, right? No, no, I mean this uh, th this feature works, right, for a long time now. It's just there's uh, I'm just trying to improve something because it 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 didn't do something that I didn't do it quite nice, right? So, okay, so we have now type primary color, blah, blah, blah. Now I switch to the background, right? So that, that in a way is fine, right? So it seems to me that at this point in time, right? this state isn't correct, right? So, or to say that colors are not actually correct, right? So where am I actually? So yeah, so maybe that's, that's kind of the stuff that we forgot doing, right? So I think here, wait a minute. Right. There we go. Actually, did it work? Wait. So let's say white, red, green. Yeah. That's it, right? That's it, I think. That was the issue. <clears throat> yeah. That's it. That's it, I think. Beautiful. Okay. Let's push that one up. That's good. I actually think that's... Pixel Root. Good evening, my friend. <laughs> um, I don't actually think that we... Do we really need this this line here though now let's see i just want to make sure we don't push unnecessary code right wait a minute what white white red save okay good we don't okay perfect okay improve uh team builder let's push this to production already Beautiful. Okay. That's great. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Let's go to Cloudflare pages. Let's go to our boards here and improve team builder. Yeah. 
So let's uh, mark this bad boy as uh, as done. <laughs> Great. What? Are you kidding me? Give me one second. Yeah, yeah. Give me one second. Yeah, exactly. Uh, um, I, I, uh, I got logged out for some reason. I don't know why. Give me one second. Take a look around. Right. Okay. There you go. Asshole. No, man, it's not. This is my side project. I got a, I got a message from you, Dimitri. Yeah, yeah, I did, man. But this is not a company, man. This is just a, this is not a, is it going to be one day? Who knows? But uh, that's very far. If I, if I could, I would. But then again, there were there would be so many people also to consider, right? People who've been watching me here for a year, right? So it would not be that simple, right? Nobody, nobody doesn't work like that, Dimitri, right? That's the problem, right? You would always have to compete with others. Nobody's just gonna employ you, right? Because that costs money, right? And blah, blah, blah. Let me just check this fella over here. Taxes, exactly. Okay, works beautiful. All right, let's do a round of questions. Any, any, anyone has any questions? Uh, new people who are watching, whatever. Uh, let's do a few minutes of questions. Any questions? Senior, junior, whatever. N no stupid questions. It's just some, um, I don't know, some cookie. No, I do not, no. Super intelligent questions. What is what snack is that? Beautiful, very technical, very important. Come on. I do use cash. Yes, we do. I use Redis. Yes. What, uh, it's actually very, very inaccurate that I dislike TypeScript. I use TypeScript at work and most of my libraries that I wrote even a decade ago are written in TypeScript, right? That's absolutely not true. It's not true that I dislike TypeScript. I just, I just, uh, TypeScript is not a, a absolute thing that you use, right? You have to choose your battles as a, as a, as a technical person, you have to choose 
when to use what, right? For me right now in programmer network, TypeScript wouldn't help because it would slow me down because it would slow me down to prototype, right? I would then have to not fight only with the components and APIs, I would have to fight with types as well, right? And you can see I have limited time, all of this platform is built inside of this stream, right? But I work, uh, I use uh, TypeScript at work uh, pretty much in every company almost, and I also, most of my libraries are written in TypeScript, right? I mean, if we go to, well, I don't know if, uh, uh, we use it in both ends, in the API and front end, yes. But if we go to some of my, let's let's say IPC, this is, this is for example, this is five years ago, right? I wrote this in TypeScript, for example, right? Rust, always Rust. So yeah, so this is one of the repositories, right? This is 2018, I think, whatever, right? So it's absolutely untrue that I dislike TypeScript. It's just uh, you have to find compromises, right? And use it at the right time, right? Uh, but um, I think that types... I, I, I mean, I gen generally think that TypeScript is not a great um, layer over JavaScript. I think because what, what, what the JavaScript com community really wants isn't TypeScript, it's types, right? And that, that, is the, that is the huge misconception in this community. JavaScript developers, right, they don't want types. Uh, sorry, they don't want TypeScript, they want types, right? So, for example, Flow... Flow from Facebook was a great attempt at that. Uh, this is what I actually hoped to succeed. Flow, unlike TypeScript, really what was doing, it was giving basic types to JavaScript, right? TypeScript, I mean, TypeScript, you know, gives you generics, gives you, e gives you a lot more stuff, and most people don't use the TypeScript features, right? Decorators and stuff like that. What, so what JavaScript community needs isn't TypeScript, it needs types, right? So, so that, that, that is the fundamental difference. Like this is what JavaScript needs. It needs some interfaces, some enums, some structs or whatever, right? Like interfaces themselves, right? But TypeScript is not necessary. We don't really as a community need TypeScript. We just need types. And that is what people miss oftentimes in my experience. Uh, they That's what most people there, there's a huge misconception there. TypeScript, we don't need TypeScript. We just need some types and we don't necessarily want or need TypeScript features. That's a difference. So this project, I was hoping many years ago that it would succeed, but it didn't succeed, right? So REST or... So if we, if we take a look, so if I actually just move those questions on the screen so I can actually eat, uh, read them easier. So it's a question time, guys. If you have questions, please write them out. So REST versus GraphQL. So, so this is a very good question, right? I, I generally dislike GraphQL very much. Uh, the reason why I dislike GraphQL very much is because I remember, the, literally I remember the time when GraphQL was released. The promise of Graph, GraphQL was super simple, set it up, all works. I don't like adding unnecessary uh, complexity and layers on top of my database. Because GraphQL, if it had a nice interface, it, so it has a single interface, but it, if it had a nice protocol or nice interface to, to interface with it, I would have liked it. I've seen and I worked with many frontends before where GraphQL was a thing and I fucking despise the JSON that you write or whatever, the graph query language, it was just horrible, right? Next.js is React rendered on the server side. So there isn't much really to, to think about it. It's just, it's server-side rendering that we have on the internet for 30 years almost, right? We have WordPress, we had PHP, right? So what do I think about Next.js? There's not much to think. It's, it's, I think it's, it's a clever set of optimizations. It's, it's pretty smart, but at the end of the day, it's really React in the in, rendered. It's a server-side rendering, right? If you need SEO, if you, you know, want to allow people to, to maybe don't enable JavaScript in the browsers, I think it's great, um, yeah. Thoughts on AI coding? Well, I use ChatGPT and uh, Copilot every second of my work, so of course uh, you should abuse that as much as possible. What's your general opinion of scalability of Git? I never had scalability issues with Git in my life, so that's my opinion. I never faced such thing. 
I don't know what surreal DB is. Is this real? Yeah, I've never heard about it. Let's take a look at it together. Nuxt.js, isn't that Vue.js? Vue.js's version of... Yeah, yeah. It's the same opinion as Next.js. It's the same crap, just rendering Vue.js in the server, right? So this is the same, like Next.js, just you, right? This is very true, right? Look, uh, as I always say, and as, as I try to keep this stream realistic, no bullshit type of stream, I haven't used GraphQL for sufficient amount of years to be able to pull out any reasonable performance metrics to back up any of my opinions that I'm going to share. But that's not my pr main problem. My main problem with GraphQL is that number one, it increases complexity, not just of your data, da data, data model, like data, your tables. It adds additional complexity in people needing to learn a technology. And the way that you interface with it through this query language that it provides, it's horrible. It's just, I don't know how much, how many of those you've wrote from the front end. I worked in a project where getting some payload in my view, I would need to write like a JSON-like query this big, right? And I don't like that. And it doesn't, so, so, um, so GraphQL isn't a new protocol, isn't. It, it, isn't re it's, it, it isn't solving any problem necessarily other than trying to decouple back-end themes for, from the front-end themes. So I think the premise of GraphQL was, hey, we're going to add this massive thing on top of your database, and then you don't really need to talk to your back-end theme at all, right? Uh, yeah, I, I mean, at the end of the day, look, as I always say, right, uh, I'm not saying that it's bad. Please don't misunderstand. I think I need to be very precise here with my words. It's just that I don't like it. Does that mean uh, does that mean that it's bad? Absolutely not. It's just not something that I find valuable that it solves my problems. Maybe, maybe right. Maybe if if I had a specific problem that it solves, maybe I would have liked it. Maybe I would start liking. I just don't think that development community has sufficient issues with Rust that GraphQL is, is mandatory or needed, right? So, so that, that's my view. I think the beauty of RESTful APIs is that it's so simple, right? It's, a, it's super simple and that's why still HTTP absolutely dominates the, everything, right? It's, why? Because it's super simple, right? It's a simple protocol, it's well-defined, it's supported, you know, on your calculator because it's so old. So I think, uh, yeah, so, so I would not, I would never say that GraphQL is bad. I would just say it doesn't really solve anything for me. Uh, it never did. And maybe because I had no issues with, with, with Rust, that's, that's really it. I think that Rustful APIs, regardless of some flaws, are still the best thing you can do for the most part. I have not heard of RS sockets. Let me just take a look at it. No, I haven't, no. So create a TCP connection. Okay, so, so create some, okay, mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, but you wouldn't use this to communicate between a, well, yeah, I mean, I guess you would use this for something different, right? You wouldn't, you wouldn't want to replace, you know, HTTP with this, right? Right, I don't think that you would, I mean, at least HTTP in a sense of, 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 uh, of you know, client, I, yeah, it doesn't seem that that's, that's their, that this protocol is intended for that. What, what, what are they saying that this is intended for?
Yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't know, right? I mean, this would be, at this point in time, something I would really need to sit, I cannot form an opinion on this. I think I'm going to definitely, um, definitely going to bookmark this, but I need to spend probably five, six hours reading this to understand truly what it is, to, to maybe then even form an opinion on it, right? Because, right, like uh, us here, you know, what we are doing here in this stream, we are on such a high level uh, of the stack, right, that we rarely think about things like protocols, right? We rare, I mean, you know, when you go to work every day, your concern isn't like, oh man, I wish HTTP was faster or something like that, right? So, so this sort of stuff is something that uh, maybe a game developer would be excited about, or uh, I don't know, low level, some, I don't know, Rust or C guy or something. And of course we should be as well, don't take me wrong. I think at one point in time, we should provide more better alternatives to HTTP, right? The main thing is, we are not because nobody really is is complaining about it, right? It, it's what it is. I think when you when you go to the average website today, when you go to the average website of a customer, they barely can make it mobile friendly. So if you if you if you if you look at it from a from a century like a customer based, uh, regular tech semi small business uh, perspective, those people can barely make a website that works. Let alone be obsessed by which protocol they're using to communicate, right? So so I think uh, this is a small tip of an iceberg of developers who are like, yeah, I think we should replace HTTP, right? But it's such a, such a insignificant detail, right? Because when you go to LinkedIn or Facebook, you press enter and you're there, right? And that's what a that's what a, um, an average user expects, right? So so So, so whoever asked me about this, I can already tell you that I'm super skeptical about this. I'm super skeptical about this. Again, it's just based on my existing experience. So look at this. The query language is SurrealDB looks and works similarly to the tradition SQL, but allows for querying over time series and connected graph data. Look, creating a literally just a SQL database is already incredibly difficult. You have Postgres, you have SQL database that exists for like, what, 30 years and even them fail in certain areas. Those guys are claiming that they did that also over time series. I mean, you have literally specialized databases out there only that are dealing with over time series problems. Like you have the buckets of, uh, you know, indexed by time range and stuff like that. And then on top of that, they claim, right? Uh, yeah, I, well, actually I experienced a similar technology that, that promised pretty much the same thing, but they failed. I don't remember, uh, but maybe 10 years ago, I was using MongoDB for some project. Uh, and there was, there was, I'm going to try to find it. I'm not bullshitting you. There was one company that pretty much promised this is like, we are a layer on top of MongoDB. And this happened when MongoDB kind of wasn't atomic and when they didn't have transactions yet. So this, we're talking about literally Mongo version. I don't know, maybe not even one. So, so this is uh, look if if what if if what they're saying here is correct, that's impressive, but this is incredibly difficult task to do. I mean, you have, uh, I mean, you would need top-notch engineers, probably hundreds of millions of dollars to build this properly, right? So I don't know, but uh, you know, who knows? I, I don't know, right? I'm gonna start this, and I mean, we can try it maybe one day in the stream. I mean, I love trying out new things, right? Uh, What do you think about using Python for a backend API? I mean, you know, like I always say, use whatever, whatever, you know, uh, I mean, I'm not a fan of Python syntax wise. Uh, that's the only, that's the only negative thing I can say about Python. I'm not really a fan of its syntax. I don't like languages that use indentation. I think that makes it a bit cryptic, right? But why not? I mean, doesn't, doesn't, uh, doesn't uh, uh, Python has this fast API, right? Yeah. This is actually when I worked at the Technical University of Denmark here in Sweden at DTU, right? Uh, I used this uh, this at DTU for building some scientific uh, scientific projects. Um, I was building some software for a for a lab laboratory for a hospital, right? And um, I I wrote this fast API, and actually to be very frank with you, I was pleasantly surprised. I, I liked I liked uh, a lot of stuff actually here. 
So I'm not a fan of Python, but I must say this was probably one of the most beautifully designed a like tools that I've used, right? So if I would be forced uh, with a, a gunpoint to write Python, I would say yes, but only if you allow me to, to use fast API, right? So that's my opinion, but uh, Vanix, you know, at the end of the day, only thing that matters is what you build, right? Again, as I always say, most people, most people in this industry, they just talk crap, right? They never actually build anything. So pick the technology that you align with, that you like, that you can actually be productive with and build things. At the end of the day, when somebody goes to www.something.com, they don't give a shit if it's Python or Node or Rust or whatever. That's just a, that's just a mature way to look at technology, right? So if this works for you, I mean, then uh, you should be the only one that listens to, to yourself and you shouldn't care, right? But I'm genuinely interested into eventually trying this out. I think this is, uh... yeah, I don't know, but I have started. Okay, any other questions? Any other, very good, very nice discussions. Is Programming Network in plain? No, Programming Network is written in React, uh, so it's not in plain JavaScript. Yeah, that would not be, that would not be very smart, building it in, in plain JavaScript. Any other questions? Yes, I don't use TypeScript for this project. That's correct, yes. That is absolutely correct. Uh, I'm not sure what you mean practice coding for free. Uh, I think analogy to that or comparison to that question would be like saying, where can I, where can I practice football for free, right? Uh, if you have a computer and uh, what you do, there you go. Uh, practicing programming means building things, right? Uh, there's no such thing as a platform where you need to practice. Like go to, I don't know, free CSS templates if you want to build websites. You can go and say, you want to practice programming. I don't know what you want to program. They want to program robots or websites or games, whatever. If you want to build websites, you go to some, you go to any website that you like and you try to replicate it. So you, you find something like this and say, okay, let me try to build this, right? And that's it. So you have to find a balance between top, uh, you know, bottom up and top down approach of learning, right? Uh, there is one collaborator in the project, but for the most part, this is done by me. There is, I don't know if Kirill is here. Unfortunately, he, yeah, he's, well, he's still with me, but it's mostly a solo job. 99.9% .9 is me. You see, tell us about your first interview. I don't remember my first interview. I mean, I started working in 2008, so it's been very long ago, but... Um, I think it was over phone. I think so. So when I was in so in two thousand eight and eight, I was eighteen years old, and I got a phone call. I got a phone call from uh, one woman, one girl, and she said, "Hey, is, is it Alex on the phone?" I said, "Yes." Um, I've heard from someone now. If I recall this, this was literally how long it was. This sixteen years ago. I've heard about you, blah, 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 blah. We have a job uh, for a network administrator at, at the company was called Svasat. So that was my, but it wasn't really an interview. I was just, no, it was. So I was called, I met this girl, this lady in a hotel, uh, like uh, in, in a lobby, like uh, there was a restaurant, we had a coffee and she told me about the work and then offered me a job on the spot. Yeah, that was my first. Yeah, that was it, uh, Vanix. That was my first experience.
And thank you everybody for the following and stuff. Uh, I actually should remind people to hit that follow button because many actually uh, forget. What's your favorite programming language? Uh, well, my two, two favorite programming languages are JavaScript and Go. Uh, I've been writing JavaScript for almost 20 years, so naturally that would be my favorite language, right? One of the first, well, actually, no, my first language was Pascal, Cobble, uh, PHP 3, and Visual Basic 6. Those were first of my languages, then C++ afterwards, naturally. JavaScript and Go are my, my two pro favorite programming languages. I did participate in hackathons, yes. This project, this programmer network project that you're looking, that where you can go and sign up now and stuff, this this was a part of a hackathon like almost 10 years ago. And then I never did it back then. And then a year ago I decided, hey, let me actually now, 10 years later, you know, yeah. Vanix, my friend, good night. Sleep well, my friend. What would you suggest to a person who is a new graduate and trying to get a job? Uh, network a lot. Go to meetups. Try to find physical meetups in your area. Try to find... Go to LinkedIn. Network on LinkedIn. Um, be active. Uh, job is not going to knock on your door, obviously. There's a lot of you graduates now. A lot of people have seen uh, many... A couple of years ago, it's like, oh, software engineers are making a lot of money, so let me go study that. So now, actually, there's this huge influx of you guys now, and uh, it's going to be difficult for, for juniors. It's going to be more difficult than before. I mean, honestly, like, chat GPT at work can probably replace a junior right now, right? So you have to network a lot. You have to go to meetups, go to events, go to join, uh, you know, join live, remote events, etc., etc., right? What is the most efficient way to plan a project, in your opinion? I, I think uh, I think the most difficult part when it comes to building projects is consistency, right? Uh, I actually have a YouTube video that that I highly advise you to to watch if you want. Uh, it speaks exactly about that. Um, uh, it's it's I literally made it uh, for side projects, but I think in short. Planning the project is easy. Being consistent and showing and making progress day by day by day by day, that's very hard. You know, I've been streaming now for a year and I show up almost every night, when, you know, after I hang out with my kid and my wife and blah, 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 and after a full-time job, right? So being consistent, being showing continuity is hard. So you can you can uh, go to Trello, Linear, uh, any Kanban board and plan all you want, but that doesn't mean anything, right? Planning is one thing, execution is another thing, right? So that that is the difference. So don't I wouldn't worry about planning too much ahead. I would actually be very careful about not setting your app self up for failure, simply because if you plan too much. At one point in time, you're going to realize that, oh, I missed this deadline, I missed that deadline. So try to be consistent first. For It's the same like if you want to go to gym or if you want to start running. If you want to start running, start running half an hour once a week. Then in two weeks, start running, you know, 45 minutes a week. Then in, in, in a month or two, start running twice a week, right? You have to do it in small steps so you don't set yourself up for failure, right? Because again, exactly, Totem, you can plan all you want, but it's not, it's the execution that matters. Showing up, getting getting the work done, right? That is the, that is the, fun, that is what makes it, that's the difference between people. There are people who do things and people who either talk about things or they just procrastinate, right? Stuff like that. So you have to do incremental step. This whole program or network platform, if you go and sign up from infrastructure, front end, back end, and all of it has been built in the stream because I keep building it every night for a long time now, right? So, um, and that's called consistency, right? So consistency is the most important thing, right? Without without consistency, nothing else, nothing really matters, right?
You don't become a senior by asking for it. Seniority relates to experience, not to anything else. You cannot be a senior. It takes many years to become an expert and a senior, right? So that's ridiculous, right? You don't, you don't ask for a title. You earn it by experience, right? I've, I see that pattern a lot. I mean, and that's the problem with uh, a lot of people on LinkedIn, a lot of juniors and a lot of inexperienced people in general are overselling themselves, right? And the only people who will suffer because of that are them, right? Because um, seniority relates again to experience, nothing else. You cannot become a senior if you don't have the experience. That makes no sense, right? And I would never hire you, you know, as a senior because you would not pass an interview for a senior. And there's no chance that you would bullshit me that way, like 100%. So if they, they can maybe bullshit someone, you can bullshit someone for sure. You can get your way through, but that's very less likely. Would you like to have PN as your only full-time job? No, I would not, no. The real job is out there with people, going to work, building things with, with your team, solving customer problems in reality. That's, that's a real job. I would not want to sit in my room whole day, every day, building something, no. I mean, look, you can, you can have, you can have self-perception about yourself as you wish, right? Nobody can really take that away from you, but you will not be able to bullshit your way to get a job. So, so you can go now to LinkedIn and, and put a title, God of Programming. But when you apply to a company, you'll have to actually fulfill the expectations. If you come to me with one year experience and you say, I'm a senior, I, I would be like, all right, sure, great. Okay, so let's, let's have an interview, right? And you would not pass that interview. There's no chance, right? 100% you would not, unless you're some sort of prodigy, right? You're like, you were born and in your genes, you know, your grandparents teleported from a different universe from the future, right? And you maybe, right? So you can have a, any self perception you want, right? But at the end of the day, can you actually prove that you're smart, right? Uh, yeah. Give me one second. Okay, more questions. Any questions? Good discussions, actually. Pretty good discussions. Anyone else? Nope. Back to coding, okay. Anyone else? I don't use anything for code reviews. We use GitHub and we use reg regular PRs and stuff. Seven, eight years ago when I worked at Airtame, we used um, um, Garrett. Uh, we used to use this. This is an internal system that Google uses. This is So this is an open source. And this basically lays between uh, your, uh, your uh, Git server. So you have... Um, so you have your local, you have your local code on your computer. Then you have Garrett. And then you have your actual remote repository or the, or whatever shit. And then here, this would be, I don't know, your GitHub, right? So this is the, the, the Garrett is the only thing that I ever used apart from GitLab and Bitbucket and stuff. And I miss it sometimes, right? Because this enhances uh, Git, Git experience a bit. It has rough specs. It has a lot of stuff. But it's a love and hate. Some people hate this. Some people like it. Most people hate it. I actually liked it because I hated it before until I learned it. But it took me a couple of weeks. I remember when I got a job at Airtame. Uh, it, it was painful. But then I started liking it as the time went by. 
Do you prefer to self-manage or have a manager over? Everybody has some sort of manager, right? There's no person in the company, including the founders that don't have some manager. I mean, everybody's managed in some way by someone. Your, your CEO and CTO and whatever, they're managed by the investors, uh, you know. But I'm not generally managed because uh, it depends on the organization, right? I'm a very proactive, I'm a tech lead also in my team and I have built my kind of credibility there that I... and. And basically, it depends what you mean managed, right? I mean, I'm a very autonomous person uh, and my team is autonomous and the organization where I work has built autonomous teams. As I said many times before, you know, we're using OKRs, objectives and key results, right? And objectives, objectives, objectives and key results, right, are the way where you build uh, uh, autonomous teams, right? So, for example, when I go to work, I don't pick tasks, our founders and the stakeholders, they come with a problem and then my team finds the solutions, right? So so, it, it, so management is a type of a thing depending how you work. Some developers like to be fed tasks. They're like, some developers are like tools, right? Give me a task, I'll do it, then I'll do five more and I'll go home, right? But that's not the way to work, right? This is a huge discussion. I, I, I can maybe, we can maybe discuss it once more, once uh, some other time, but I can, I can, share a lot of knowledge in this field and I can tell you that uh, there are various ways. Uh, yeah, right. So, so, but you want to build out uh, autonomous teams. Uh, you want, you want your developers to do a lot more than just write code, right? Because that's not going to be possible soon anyway because of AI. If you end up being a developer that's only writing code at work, you're not going to have a job, right? If, you, if you're that type of a developer who doesn't contribute to anything but writing code, then you will probably not have a job very soon, right? Uh, so I advise you to, to change your priorities, to, to focus on the product, focus on the customer, because AI sooner or later is going to actually be able to, to some extent, fulfill your spot, right? But if you manage to inject yourself in your organization to actually be more uh, valuable than just being a tool, then, uh, yeah. Whoever uh, gifted this anonymous, thank you very much for the gift. No, no, we don't have Scrum Master. That's that's ancient way of work, right? We don't do that, right? We have a product manager and we plan things as a team with CTO or within the team, right? We we don't, don't. That, for me, that is ancient type of uh, organization, right? That's not, uh, that is that is unnecessary, right? And we also don't do sprints. We don't have sprints. We don't have sprints. That's also something that never works, right? It rarely ever works. We plan specific objectives every quarter. And then, um, so, so every quarter, so imagine that it's Q4, whatever, Q3. Yeah, exactly. So let's imagine it's Q3. You plan, I want to do this, that, 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 that. And then you plan this within your team. As I said, we're, we're doing OKRs, objectives and key results. So what happens in my organization, CTO, CEO, and other higher, uh, and also I with them as well, we say, okay, we, there's a, this huge roadmap we open. We say, okay, what are we doing this quarter? Okay, we're doing those four things and then I have a product manager in my team. So my team consists of me. I'm a tech lead. We have a product manager. This is generally, uh, we have a, not project manager, product manager, that's a huge difference. We have uh, two other developers, two other full stack developers, and we have a designer. So how do we work? Well, higher, higher management says this quarter, we have this for this team. One of those things is going to be a support, support objective. So sometimes it's not really the code that you're writing for your, your, your part of the application because we have multiple teams in my organization. So we, we have a support task and you, this quarter you're going to have to support team, you know, you know, you know, team B, right? Team B is going to require your time of your, of your thing, right? And um, 
and this then my team, I sit with my team, right? I sit with uh, my designer, my product manager, my other developers, right? I'm responsible as a tech lead to obviously lead the technical side of things because I have the most knowledge there and experience, probably, still. But everything's questionable, of course. Uh, the developers that I have in my team are also very good, very competent and very hardworking as well. Um, and that's it. So they come with us and Steen, my, 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 my product manager, comes and Alex, we have four OKRs, this objective. Let's figure out how to break them down. Let's break them into stories. Then whoever takes it, we break them into subtasks, blah, 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 blah. And of course, uh, like uh, like Bamba Bamba said, uh, there are various ways to work. There there isn't only a si single way. So I'm just presenting how I work in my organization. Now, does this would this work for everybody? Of course not, right? I mean, management is a hard thing, and you have to find things that work for you, right? For for us, this works because I'm personally incredibly autonomous. I nobody comes to me at work and tells me what to do, right? I would find that incredibly annoying and, and impossible. I just don't operate like that. But some people do operate like that and that's also fine. We're all different, right? The point is you have to find specific framework of work for your team and the personas in there. And of course, this this reflects also on hiring. This is the type of person you want to hire. I, so we are a dream data where I work. We hire people who are, sort of, like, who are autonomous, who are self-driven, and who have, need low maintenance. So that's why I say I would never hire a developer who just sits and writes code. You would be useless to me. I don't need a tool, right? If I needed a tool, I would hire a guy from India or Pakistan or from some other cheaper country. If I just needed someone that I give tasks to and they deliver, I would not hire you. I would, I would go to some, uh, you know, uh, more cheaper country, you know, and, and hire people there. So I would, again, if you're just writing code at work, Poland as well, right? So so why would I hire you, right? Yeah. But that, that's how it works. And again, as always, there isn't only a single way to, to work. There are many ways to work. And um, and management is hard. I mean, everybody is shitting on managers. But uh, if, if any of you is a manager, then you know how difficult it is to make everybody happy all the time, right? It's impossible. I mean... It's hard to make a single person happy sometimes, let alone 5, 10, 50 people, right? So, but that's, that's really how it is. But great questions, great questions, great discussion. A any, more, any more questions? Anyone else? Any other interesting subjects? I have five people in my team, uh, if you, but we have five different teams. So, I mean, we are cross-team organization. We have around 20 or 30 engineers, and we are very coupled in a way. So each one of us has specific responsibility, but uh, my team is five people. It's me, my product manager, designer, and two more people. Smarty, my friend, good evening. I'm doing really well, man, just answering some questions. What's your take on working from home? I don't think working from home is healthy for you. Uh, I think... I think hybrid, having access to work from home, I fully support. And I think it's it's good that, that we have the freedom, but I don't think that working from home is healthy for anybody. I think uh, work is not just uh, writing code, work is interacting with people. Work is a lot more than just, uh, you know, sitting behind your screen. Um, so I don't think that's good for you. And I don't think that actually quite contrary to what you might read all over the internet, I don't think that the future of work is remote at all. And I think that even though it's it's an opinion, and as they say, opinions are like assholes, everybody has one, it's not. And uh, many of you are probably excited today because, oh, you're able to wake up and sit on a chair. But I, I ensure you that uh, if you haven't already got bored of that, um you will get bored of that and you will miss human interaction, right? So um, especially if you're a junior, you should never, ever work from home. If you're a junior, if you're just out of the university, you have so much more to learn than just writing code. 
You have to learn how to talk to people, how to listen to people, how to read people's emotions. And there's so much more when you're a junior that you have to learn. If you're, you know, somebody who's been in the, in the industry for 10, 15 years, you probably have seen it all and stuff. Sure, you can work from anywhere you want, whenever you want. But I would still not suggest people to do that, right? Yeah, I mean, honestly, I don't think that sitting home whole day, every day, waking up is healthy for anybody, right? Again, I would never, I think that it's, I would never, I think for me, for me, two things at work matter the most, autonomy and freedom and trust, actually three. So trust, autonomy, and freedom. So I'm not suggesting that somebody should be dictating and telling you, hey, you will never work from home. That's not the point. I just genuinely believe that working from home is not healthy for you. It's not healthy for any of us. I feel it sometimes like last week, my wife was working a bit more, so I decided to work from home the whole week. I just felt it really bad. I missed my colleagues. I missed my team. I missed sitting on a bike and going to work. And so many other things. So that's why I say going working is not just your hard skill, whatever your hard skill is. Work is a lot more than that. Pixel Root, good night, my friend. Yep. I don't know. I think we're 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 people. We are social beings. We 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 need each other. We we can't live without each other. And human human interaction, human connection should not be taken for uh, as something irrelevant, right? The, the point isn't, right? The point, because this is, this is, this is kind of what I've seen, right? Uh, when I discuss this with people, when I discuss with these people, those, those I, I call them remote messiahs, right? Because now when you talk to some people, the only way to ever work is just, they, they kind of try to shove that your face. So, so it's not that they're just saying, I like working from home. They're like, no, 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 you must also be loving that, right? And the most common arguments are this. Why would I spend two hours in a car to get to work? Blah, blah, blah. First of all, majority of people don't need to spend two hours in a fucking car to get to work. If you have to spend two hours to get to work, then find another fucking job. For, for the most part, if you can, right? Um... So that's number one. So the argument like that is just dumb for the most part, because again, statistically, I'm sure most people don't take two hours to go to work. Now, a remote job in a foreign country would pay four more. Sure. I mean, again, there are exceptions to everything in life. I mean, uh, you cannot uh, take anything I say or anyone else literally in every... Uh, are there some exceptions? Yes. I'm always talking generally. I think I truly believe and genuinely believe that being with people and going to work is healthy for ev for for ninety nine percent people. You cannot tell me that t waking up, walking to work, and stuff like that isn't health. Like there's so many things, right? But again, I'm I'm sure. Look, again, we don't have to we don't have to turn this into a, uh, a right or wrong binary type of thing. There's no right or wrong. Somebody asked me a question, and I'm giving you a genuine opinion of mine, my feelings, my you know. I've spent when I I spent uh, you know four and a half years actually working remotely. Uh, when I worked for Thinkful for this bootcamp, it was the most lonely time of my life. I literally at one point. I installed this Chrome extension that simulates the sounds of a cafeteria. And at that point, that was the last, uh, last drop of water. I said like, fuck man, this is not good anymore. I was making shit tons of money. I was happy. I bought an apartment. I had a super insane office, just like this one, top notch equipment, all of that, but nothing replaces people, right? Uh, and, uh, sure. Like, like you, like, uh, like, per, uh, like, uh, Perlol is saying, I get that, that there are exceptions. I get that uh, some people have it hard to get to work. Sure, in those, in those, when it comes to those exceptions, then of course you would, you would apply different maybe type of, uh, you know, you would have a different opinion. But I, I mean, here for example in Copenhagen, where I live, no matter where you where you work, you're at work 
10 to 15 minutes by bike. Almost, doesn't matter which part of town, infrastructure is so good that you are at work in no time, right? Um, sure, sure, sure. Again, there are exceptions and that's, that's what it is, right? try to, I don't know, for me, again, that's just, that's just how it is. I, and I think if you're a junior, I would not probably allow juniors to work from home for their own good, because a lot of people with insecurities, with lack of confidence and stuff, try to fix the problem by avoiding it, right? So, so instead of going to work and facing people, facing reality, facing something that you're going to have to face in life anyway at one point in time, you hide behind a Slack or, or Zoom or Google Hangouts and you think, problem solved, I don't have to talk to anybody because I can just sit at home. But that's not the solution, right? Totem, sleep well, my friend. Thank you for coming. Is the startup culture good in Denmark? It is. It's really good. It's really good. All right, any other questions? Oh, you asked some question. Wait. No, I mean, again, like, okay, like, uh, really, really one thing that I have to that my stream so so what i want my stream to be unlike majority of the streams on this platform and youtube channels is i really want to convey some reality right uh, and let me let me say what i'm let me try to elaborate what i mean um i can see that a lot of you guys and a lot of developers today are are really highly influenced by what's happening in the community right why am i saying this madi like you for example you asked about Kubernetes, right? And, and I know why you asked, because anywhere you go, you hear about Kubernetes, right? Um, Kubernetes, first of all, is, in, is incredibly complex. That's number one. Kubernetes is really hard. To get Kubernetes, uh, to get Kubernetes correct, that's very difficult. That's not, but let's, let's forget that detail, right? Uh, you need Kubernetes to orchestrate multiple servers or like, to work together, right? You don't need that, right? You, you, and you will probably never need that, right? You need Kubernetes to scale things to a level which you probably will not need. I mean, in, in actually, in reality, majority of companies or actually, not majority, that's, that's a shitty thing to say. I can say I'm sure that many companies out there that use Kubernetes don't actually need Kubernetes, right? Um, so no, no, not really. You, you use Docker normally, Use Docker, Docker network, make services, expose some services only internally in your network, expose those that need to hit the internet, like, I don't know, your API, whatever, to public. Kubernetes, to, to, to really need Kubernetes, you would need to, you need scale, right? Kubernetes is for scale and not for what you are intending here, right? And I see a lot of people, Kubernetes, 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 it's like, man, like, why, right? Because again, Kubernetes is hard, man. In production, because we use Kubernetes at, at, uh, at Dream Data, right? We use probably 20 or 30 different GCP services. We use BigQuery, Dataform, Datastore, Kubernetes. We use uh, pretty much almost the entire suit because our whole product is based, is, 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 is built around the GCP, right? Just do it one by one. So the programmer network, look, let me show you one thing. Let me just show you, I think it's very interesting. It's a very good question. Let me show you one thing. Uh, uh, so let me show you the infrastructure of, of programmer network. I'm sure you've seen it already, but let me show you again, J just so I can show you one thing. So when I, 
When I started Programmer Network, right? When I started, um, when I started Programmer, so this is Programmer Network infrastructure, right? My, the infrastructure now that I have is pretty, is relatively complex, but in short, we have a React app, Hetzner Firewall, I have my whole reporting and error logging stack here. I have internal uh, Nginx reverse proxy and blah, 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 blah. This is now. But when I started this project, it was really just this. I had, a, I had a client and I had an API. So I had this guy and I had this guy, right? But then I'm like, okay, well, I need to somehow renew my certificates using Let's Encrypt. Well, let's add Nginx then, right? And then I had some third bot, which wasn't like now. Right now it's, it's a Docker image itself. But before it was basically, let me give me one second. So, so again, right, but again, infrastructure is a growing thing. You don't just add 15 services because of it, right? Like I didn't have Redis initially. I didn't have, uh, most of this stuff wasn't there. So this grew as my streams went ahead and stuff. Then I added Grafana, Prometheus, various exporters for my stack, Google Cat Advisor to monitor performance of Docker images, Alert Manager to send uh, messages to my Slack when error happens in my API, Third bot to regenerate my SSL certificates, uh, right? Let's encrypt and stuff. A lot of this stuff, right? But this was not, I didn't sit and just do this all randomly like this. I, I added it by need. So I implemented Redis when, when, I, when we built the notification system in Programmer Network. I just, I just wanted to make sure that notification system, even though it's super simple, it doesn't use like RabbitMQ or PubSub or whatever, there's no retry mechanisms. I just wanted to make sure that my notification system doesn't almost interface with database at all, right? So I then introduced Redis and then I cached ways in a very clever way. So notifications were, so what I'm trying to say, I guess you want to build things when you want to solve the problems when they happen, right? You're not going to start a project now and start with Redis, Postgres, AppSmit, you know, for external dashboards and all of this stuff. You start somewhere, you build something and then you say, okay, well, I need to secure this now. How do I secure this now? Okay, well, let me put it behind some firewall. And then you go further on and say, let me put it behind Cloudflare IP ranges. So I get some DDoS protection and uh, additional firewall and page rules and um, uh, CDN, blah, blah. Like this is pretty complex now, right? But again, I didn't just do this in one go. It, it, it started from the client, from the app. Then I built the API in relation to this. Then, you know, it grew over time. This is now, you know, a couple of streams ago, if you remember, I, I built this microservice, this, this task scheduler, right? Which I didn't deploy yet, right? And we're gonna probably in the, right? For the next whole year, we're gonna probably have 10 more microservices here, right? Because I know that we're gonna need them, but we're gonna add them when we actually need them, not before that, right? Obi, my friend, good night to you as well, man. Thank you very much for being here. So that's how it is. That's how it is. And um, this is all, again, it looks complicated to some degree it is. It maybe even looks impressive to some degree it is, but it's not really. It Again, it has been added over time, right? So when I look at it from this perspective, now it's like, oh my God, so much stuff, right? Well, I mean, this whole, in, this my, my infrastructure or to say architecture isn't fully microservice. So it's it's like, it, it, it for the most part it, it is, but um, it's questionable in the context of the API because API you could, uh, but uh, I don't, I don't actually even look at it that way. Make it, uh, make it, make it piss. I don't even look, uh, look at it that way. This is a task scheduler, right? Which Think about those things as they were functions, right? Almost, right? Um, yeah, Stack Overflow uses, uh, they're running a monolith for sure. Yes, absolutely. Um, this service just made sense to, this service just made sense to be decoupled, right? Or to be its own service because I will probably call this thing from various other places later on. So this is not, it, it didn't make me, right? I don't operate that way. I didn't like, I didn't start this project and said, 
I'm going to do this as a monolith or microservices. It, it, I just follow my natural instinct, right? So some things are not microservices and they're part of the API itself. But then some things are because it doesn't make sense simply logically to make them part of the API, right? Because I don't, I don't want this API to end up being hit by everything eventually, right? I don't want my, no, my, my, my client side API to be handling scheduling this. You get what I mean? So, so it, it's more about sometimes some things just naturally don't make sense to be part of your API. And then you write, uh, that's really, really all that there is to it, right? There, there isn't any, there isn't any, like this thing is like, I know, I just know that this thing I will call probably from several, several different places, right? So that, that's the difference. ZS, uh, good, good, uh, good night, my friend. And I'm sorry, but you're, you, you guys have chosen some nicknames. It's impossible for me to read them. So whatever your name is, good night, man. So yeah, I mean, sometimes, you know, again, that's also why it's important to not, not fall victim to this uh, community, programming community. Don't, I wouldn't take things literal, literally at all. Sometimes just to ask yourself, does this make sense to be part of the same service or does it, ma does it make more sense for it to become its, its own entity itself so it can act as another service and be called from various different places, right? So, so this is kind of how I approach it. It's, it's sometimes it's, I'm not going to go to my Fastify API now and, and like break it into 15 microservices because one, pe one thing that people underestimate when it comes to microservices is really a delay, right? So there's a, you create a, every time you, you break things into microservices, they have to communicate via something, right? And you're in introducing latency for no reason. So yeah, it, it's, it's, I, I would say one has to be careful when it comes to this. That's all, right? We got a sub, another sub from the anonymous person. Well, thank you very much, anonymous person. I wish uh, I knew who you were to thank you, but uh, whoever you are, thank you very much. Uh, all right, any other questions? Any other QSs? And, and guys, if you, if you didn't already, please go and sign up. You can sign up in, in one click almost, please. Let's see if there's any more interesting questions. And you and the question doesn't have to be the most uh, the most complicated question. If there's any people who are new to the stream and you're wondering about something, just ask. Um, Let me just take a look at my stuff here. Is Santa real? Uh, <laughs> um, I mean, who knows? Maybe he is. Honestly, Smaddy, I suck at those things, right? I'm, I'm, I'm really bad at, at those things because uh, for the entirety of my career, and again, I've been working now, this is the 16th year that I'm actively working in the industry. I never took the time and I will never take time to, to learn those things. And that's why I will never work at the unicorn company like Google, nor I would want ever to work there, right? So so I, let me tell you one thing. Uh, uh, so I went to... I went to .js conference in Paris, I think in 2017. And it was a really good conference and it's related to your question. So, so just bear with me for a second. So I went to .js conference, I think it was 2017 or 18, it was in Paris, one of the best conferences I've been to. And I met Ivan Yu, the creator of uh, Vue.js and I met Igor Minar, the creator of AngularJS. And I had, a beer, I had the beer with them and I asked Igor, the creator of Angular, Hey man, like why are why do you do all of those stupid you know stupid questions uh, on Google interviews like traversing the binary, the trees and all of that? And he said he told me this I remember very well. He said you you know man none of us actually memorize or knows all of that stuff, but people at Google just want to know that you're capable of learning it. 
And besides that, they get so many, so many candidates that they have to impose some restriction on, on, on hiring. So, so basically, the, the, I think this is their philosophy. If a person, if a person, so, so this is the philosophy of those companies, because keep in mind, Amazon, Google, Microsoft, they get hundreds of thousands of applicants every year. This is their philosophy. It's very, it's very logical. And, and you cannot hate them for that. They're saying if you if a candidate is capable of learning all of this gibberish from lead code, they are then probably capable of learning React. So, so by no means that anyone at Google, for instance, is stating that just because you learn shit tons of useless crap that you're a better engineer. It, it's rather just, okay, let's filter out a bunch of people up front so we can make our hiring process cheaper. Because, you know, I've, I've spent, I've, I've been involved in hiring at the companies where I worked the past five, six years. And I can tell you hiring is very expensive. It's expensive because, uh, because, but it, it doesn't matter, right? Uh, it, it's just those things exist to make hiring cheaper for them. That's really all. They know, if you know that, they know at Google that, and I mean, the thing is hiring is also broken, right? I mean, hiring is random. You don't really know how good or bad the person is until you actually get them to, to start working, right? So, so it, it doesn't really matter what the problem is, is it a trivial problem or not. All of those things are just patterns. When you do those lead code useless things and stuff, at one point you realize that there's like five or 10 different patterns. You have several algorithms and data structures that you apply, you know, you recognize the problem. So, but, that's really what it is. It just exists. So those companies that have tens of thousands of interviews, they just cut half at least already and then operate on the other half, right? So, so, so that's really all that there is. I never learned most of that stuff apart from my university stuff, algor algorithms and data structures, and I never will. I, I would never ever go to lead code and do that crap. That's the biggest waste of time. Because instead of doing that crap, you can actually build something, try to build a business, try to build a product that people want to use, right? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? And that's the thing. So instead of wasting your time doing some meaningless bullshit, sit, build some application, try to build something that people want to use. That's really all that matters. Can you write uh, 15 loops nested inside of each other and solve some crap? Who gives a crap? Nobody, right? Um, but yeah, if you want to get a job at fan companies, then you have to do it. And that's really all that there is. Uh, with lead code type of questions aside and design systems, what, what your way of preparation? Uh, so to be very frank with you, uh, to very, uh, to be very frank with you, like I probably haven't. So keep in mind, I live in Copenhagen, so I live in Europe. Uh, hiring here in Europe is vastly different than in the US. So there's literally no significance. Here in my 15 years of experience, I don't think that I was ever asked questions related to algorithms and data structures. That's We just don't do that here because we inherently, as a community, find it useless. I, I would never, you know, when I'm hiring people, I would that would be the absolute last thing I would ask. There's so many more important things to ask than did you memorize uh, 50 different things? It's just ridiculous, right? Um, second things, for me personally, I have very good references. So for example, past two, or two companies, I practically almost didn't even interview. Uh, I have several good CTOs here in Copenhagen who are my reference. I have a lot of colleagues who are my references. So. When you have references, it goes very fast. You, you basically, because when a company gets very good references, and, and this is a small community, Here, Copenhagen is not a Shanghai or whatever, Be Beijing, right? So, so it's a very, it's a relatively small town. So co-founders, startups know each other here. So it's a different culture, right? I, I do think that design system interviews, those could be interesting. I think that I could find useful. Hey, you know, you know, designing an event emitter or a notification system or some stuff, I, I would still not ask it and fail someone because they don't know, but at least that's something that you can definitely face in your work, right? It's, 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 it's absolutely possible that you can, you know, 
need to design notification system, like for example, or something like that. But uh, I never really prepared for those things. I uh, my 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 kind of card to getting job is experience and projects. So you know, when I go to work, it's like, where did you work? Well, that's where I worked, and this is what I built. And there is nothing as strong as that, right? Everything else is bullshit, right? And it's the same here in this stream. Whenever some smart ass comes to the stream, I just say, oh, why are you not writing Rust? I ask them, okay, show me what did you do in Rust? And they never come back again, right? Uh, so the best really thing you can do for yourself is really um, build things, right? That is your best bet that you're capable of doing things, right? Um, that has worked for me. Uh, I never really, uh, again, did those useless things and I never will, right? And I, yeah. But again, culture here in Europe is very different than in the US, so I don't actually take my uh, take my advice uh, with that, uh, you know, uh, I would be careful taking my advice on that, right? All right, any more questions? I think I'm gonna probably head off. My wife came from work, but we're gonna definitely see each other uh, see each other tomorrow anyway. Uh, I'll be streaming. I think I'll be streaming tomorrow as well. Any other questions be before I head off? I'm not really in a hurry. It's just we don't like it right, right? Are you running a Docker in VSL? If yes, do you experience performance issues? Regard? No, I, I don't. I don't. I don't. I mean, keep in mind, th this is my streaming machine. And this machine is, this is a very insane machine. So I don't think that I can, I mean, this is a, this is a, tw a 16 core. This is a 16 core i9, right? With a DDR5 almost running at 6,000 megahertz, 4070 Ti, right? So this is a, this, I have the fastest SSD right now on the planet, right? So this is a, this computer cannot have performance issues, right? And yes, I'm running Windows Linux subsystem, right? I don't think I will have uh, any performance issue in this thing, right? Because this, uh, this is a very good machine, right? Yeah, it's Gen 5 SSD, yes. Yep, I can show you. I, I recently bought it. Uh, so yeah, I bought it 25th of August. I don't know. Yeah, this is what I have right now. So this computer, <laughs> this computer doesn't have performance issues. RTX forty seventy Ti, one gigabit, uh, one gigabit Ethernet. Uh, yeah. I mean, I didn't overclock the the RAM, but I can run I can I can run this RAM on six thousand four hundred megahertz. It's just it wouldn't make any difference. But I could clock it to six six thousand four hundred, but it would make no difference, right? Try running New World, exactly. Try running New World. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, it's a very good PC. It's it's a it's a very insane PC. Yes. Any other questions? Uh, my uh, coding compatriots. Okay, come on, guys. Uh, seriously, please. If you have a minute, just sign up. I don't want you to. If you if you if you if you appreciate the stream, if you've learned something, and if you're willing to stick around, I would really appreciate it if you sign up. Can you give me advice? Uh, you just have to code. I know that this advice is going to be a bit useless, but the only way to learn to program is to do it, right? So find a, find a single course, go to Udemy, get a $10 bootcamp course, and just follow that course. Follow that course, follow it from start till the end. Uh, I think your generation today, the new generation, uh, what, what are uh, if I'm a boomer, what are you guys? The opposite, I don't know. Uh, th this new generation has a huge, huge issue um, 
not focusing really on anything. You guys are literally, um, I, I'm actually in a way scared for my son because uh, you guys, I mean, just look at the, the YouTube shorts and stuff. Uh, attention span of an average uh, teenager today is like one second, right? So find the course and stick to the course, right? Um, Ah, read the questions. Okay, okay, I see. That's actually a good point. Well, thank you very much. I know nothing about Twitch, uh, so yeah. But if you want to learn the program, you have to. Yeah, you have the program. There's no, there's no shortcut. It's 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 a lot of work. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of, it's a lot of hours sitting down. And at one point in life, everything connects and everything is so easy, right? It becomes like uh, your spoken language. It it becomes easy, but. To get there, um, it's a long path. So be humble and um, you're going to suck for a long time, probably for a couple of years. Uh, yeah. No, I don't think so. I mean, I don't think that AI will actually... That, that's the thing. I think that's a, that's a huge misconception. Um, not really, right? Because the thing is... AI, uh, ChatG, should you use ChatGPT to learn? Absolutely. You should use ChatGPT. I use ChatGPT every, every day at work in the stream and stuff. But that's not the thing, right? Programming, just like anything else, it just requires time. No matter, you can get me, you can hire me to teach you every day. That doesn't matter. The problem is it takes just time to feel it, to get the... You, uh, no matter what resource you use, right? It, it's, it doesn't work like that, right? You can use ChatGPT and, uh, yeah, oh, I'm going to use ChatGPT and become a developer in three months. You will not. Because it, it's, it takes time to, to understand, not, not to learn the patterns by, by heart, but to get them under your skin, to, to start writing code that's good code. And this just takes, they, they, takes time. It takes sometimes even years, right? So, yes, uh, ChatGPT will help you to learn and please use it Pay, I, I'm paying for ChatGPT4 pretty much since day one. But don't uh, don't expect that it's going to do more, right? It, it's, it's uh, you know, when I when I worked in Sweden maybe eight, nine years ago, my, my friend uh, Jan Svensky, uh, who, whom I actually started this project with, he said, uh, and I, I don't think it was his quote, but it says, it takes a long time for to a master programmer to an expert programmer so um yes sure uh, some of you might have uh, learned to build a react app and create three components you're and you're feeling like a hacker and i get that right and that's all great and f great good job but uh, takes a lot lo many years uh, to truly understand so many things right so give it time and and uh, yeah start yesterday right there's no shortcut to this path there's no shortcut to this path. Um, all right, great. Ten thousand hours to master. Exactly. Pretty much. Pretty much. Exactly. That's that's uh, that's just how it is, and. Uh, you just need patience. I mean, I don't, uh, you know, when I, you know, uh, I was maybe fortunate in life I, since I was very young. I just, uh, I was lucky to, to, to like programming. And I remember, I remember still the journey of getting PHP 3 book when I was very young, buying uh, or getting uh, Pascal and Cobol books from some very old friends of my parents. Uh, and, and, and back then at no point in time, I was thinking about the end of that journey, right? So it's, it's a lot of impatience today. It's a lot of people who want to get somewhere uh, too fast, right? Um, every, every mastery of something takes time. And I mean, if you, if you, if you're at the start and you're all already looking for the end, you're not going to get anywhere, right? Cause you're going to get heavily disappointed because the path is, uh, the, everything takes time, right? And that's just how it is. And the sooner you you acknowledge this and accept it, you can have all the all the chat GPTs in the world and streams like this one or whatever. But it just takes time, man. And uh, yeah, that's really all that there is. Uh, build things and uh, right. And uh, one thing, I mean, this is a. a 
this really stream is, I like to, I want this stream to be no fucking Twitter God bullshit stream, right? So I can just tell you like, be careful who you follow, be careful what type of advice you listen. I actually get a lot of fucking bullshitters in this stream almost every night. Self-proclaimed uh, YouTube video medium reading experts who read something and then they praise it to everybody else. This is hard. It takes time. If you read a, if you find a tutorial that says learn JavaScript in three weeks, don't don't trust that. You will not learn it. That can just discourage you because you're gonna realize how unrealistic any of that crap is. Because just think about it logically, if programming was so easy, then none of us would have a job. Why would I be paid so much, right? Um, why would be, like, if, if it was just, yeah, anyone can code, well, why people are not doing it, right? So don't get discouraged, you know, it's it's a path that, that you have to go through and it's normal, oh, everybody goes through it, right? Um, and there's just a lot of bullshit in the internet. There's a lot of YouTubers who actually don't really code, they copy content from each other, they go read the documentation, then they, it's really all clicks. So I think programming community today has probably never been worse in history. And I remember the community literally 20 years ago. Programming used to be something nerds would do. It was not, it was not cool. It was not something that people would be like, super, you know, super like, uh, you know, today you have a bunch of fucking hipsters with the, their stickers and, and cool mugs and, and shirt tied up to their neck, uh, selling you some crap, right? That is the new reality. And it's all for clicks and views and likes and engagement and stuff because that, that's what makes money. So as soon as something new comes out, YouTube is filled with that crap, right? I would be very careful with that, right? Because as I always say, the only thing you can trust is advice from someone who actually used something in production, someone who has worked with the technology for some time and someone who has truly learned things by using something, not by reading a tutorial or reading a comment on YouTube and then sharing that opinion with everyone else, right? So that's really how it is. Uh, that's how it is. Uh, well, cool. That's my uh, rant uh, for the end of the stream. It's midnight here. I'm gonna see my wife. And um, what is to say, folks? I wish you best. Be smart. Do something good for yourselves, as I always say at the end of my stream. And uh, thank you for being here. Thank you for listening to my crap. And I'll see you guys. Uh, I'll see you guys. Uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Okay. Good night, fellas. Good night, Rebecca Smarty. Mutle DK. Thank you, guys. Play one game, everybody. Thank you very much, guys. I wish you best. I'll see you guys. I'll see you guys tomorrow, okay? Peace out. Cheers, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. Cheers. Bye-bye.